Yosef and Yeshua. What do you mean Yosef and Yeshua? Yeah, Yosef is Joseph, right? It, Hebrew is just Yosef. And Yeshua is Jesus in Hebrew. And we're going to be comparing them, you guys, in this episode. We're going through Genesis chapter 37, the beginning of Joseph's story. And you will be shocked at this because Joseph's story is the most powerful picture in the Old Testament of Jesus, of Yeshua HaMashiach, if you're in Israel, Jesus the Messiah, that you will ever see. I promise you that. And we're going to look at that right now. And this is so exciting to me, you guys. So Yosef and Yeshua. Here it is, Psalm 81. It says this, Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our solemn feast day, for this is a statute for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. He established it as a testimony in Joseph, or Yosef, right? Testimony in the Old Testament Testament always, always, always refers to God himself, not a person. So Joseph it has a testimony, a testimony in Joseph, a testimony of what? Of God himself, God the Son, Jesus. And you're going to see that, I promise you, in this episode. Stick with it, and you're going to see amazing things as we go through this. This is just the first part of this series on Joseph in the playlist series, Jesus, how to see and how to find Jesus in the Old Testament. Here we go. I'm so excited about this. I love it. All right. So we see that in Psalm 81. He established it as a testimony in Joseph, a testimony of Jesus. Here we go. He had a miraculous birth. Remember that? In Genesis chapter 30, then God remembered Rachel, Jacob's wife, Rachel, right? And God listened to her and he opened her womb. That speaks of the same type of thing with Jesus, right? And Mary. In Matthew chapter 2, it says he stayed there, right? Talking about Joseph. Uh, or Jesus, excuse me, he stayed there where? In Egypt until the death of Herod. This happened so that what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet would be fulfilled. Out of Egypt, I called my son. A lot of people don't like that. Some people criticize that and say it meant something else. No, the Bible tells us right here, Matthew, this Jewish man named Matthew, he tells us, that this scripture was speaking ultimately about Jesus. But it also, what, speaks about Joseph and even Moses, who was another type of Christ. We're going to get into that later in a different episode. But they're both types of Christ. They both were lived in Egypt. They both had miraculous births. They both had Gentile wives. They were rejected by their own the first time. And then later, he saved. they saved all of Israel. This is God's plan, you guys. And then unites the family, the new Gentile family, with his Israeli family as one family to live in the best of the land forever. That sums it up, guys. <laughs> and so let's look at this. So Egypt, right here, this is the Nile River. Here's the Red Sea, and here's the other part of the Red Sea right here. Up here is Israel, okay, to the north, kind of the northeast here. Jerusalem's right around here somewhere. There's a little bit of cloud cover on there right now, but this is the, uh, the the delta area of the Nile where it's very lush and you can grow things here. And in this area too, all this is an area where you can grow and it would flood. Uh, during Joseph's time, it would flood every year and they would irrigate their crops that way. So just a little insight into what we're looking at here. So Genesis chapter 37, let's start with it right now. Let's get into it. Joseph. When he was 17 years of age, was pastoring the flock with his brothers. And while he was still a youth, along with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, Joseph brought back a bad report about them to their father. So it's kind of like when Jesus went off to pray, like he often did, I am sure of it that he would give a bad report to his father about what he was finding there on earth with these religious leaders that were shepherding the father's flock, and they were doing a bad job of it. Not all of them, but most of them were. And Jesus would give them a bad report about them. And by the way, that's a good way to pray. Don't gossip to other people about problems you have with other people. That's, that's horrible. God does not like gossip. What you should be doing is doing what Jesus did. Go away by yourself somewhere 
and talk to him about it. I mean, gossip to him. I mean, that's not really gossip when you talk to God about this problem because he understands it. He knows how to help you with it. He'll give you wisdom. He'll he'll help you through it. And that's the way to do it. So just a little tip there, insight if you're a believer and uh, how to deal with gossiping and and when your, your need to share about some people that are really bothering you. All right, let's get back into this presentation. So Genesis 37, and Joseph brought back a bad report about them to their father. And then verse 3, now Israel loved Joseph more than all of his other sons. Wait a minute, what does that mean? Yeah, it means he was the father's most favored son. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, was also the father's favored son. It was his only son, right? (laughs) Because none of us were sons of God until Jesus died on the cross and resurrected from the dead, and we became adopted sons and daughters to him part of his family. But before that, there was only one son, and that was Jesus. And so he was the father's most favored son. That's what we're seeing in this scripture. Because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a multicolored tunic. Now, that multicolored tunic was a lot of scholars say could have just meant it was long sleeves, perhaps a seamless tunic. Um, it was different than what the the brothers wore, probably. They probably wore the cut-off sleeves for working and laboring. And Joseph had what would be considered like white collar today. The 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 big manager, the guy in charge, would, would have the long sleeves and the long robe. And then we see that in Revelation too. It says it describes Jesus as having a a, a tunic down to his ankles. Pretty interesting stuff. There's a lot of parallels to Revelation and this story of Joseph. So, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his brothers because he was the son of his old age and made him a multicolored tunic. It could have been multicolored as well. All right, so here we go. Here's a picture. Pretty cool. Like, I think Jacob was probably a lot older than that, by the way. And he was giving Joseph this gift, uh, which was awesome. So, Genesis 37 continues in verse 4, and his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all of his brothers. So he was going to be like the heir, the inheritance would go to Joseph, right? That's what we're seeing here. So the father's favored son, like his only son. And then the scripture continues, and so they hated him and could not speak to him on friendly terms or peaceably to him. They could not speak with peace to him. They hated him. Hating him, that that's a sin, right? They were sinning, you guys. So it wasn't a good thing. And then Joseph, Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. Whoa, oh boy, this is not looking good for Joseph, right? And he said to them, please listen to this dream which I have had. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, And behold, my sheaf stood up and also remained standing. And behold, your sheaves gathered around and bowed down to my sheaf. A sheaf was a bundle of wheat or grain or barley like this. And Joseph just described this scene right here. Them, these are his brothers bowing down to his sheaf, basically to him, right? So Genesis 37 continues, and his brother said to him, are you actually going to reign over us or are you really going to rule over us? Huh, sounds familiar to me. Let's get into it in a minute. So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. The Pharisees and the religious leaders, the Sadducees, they hated Jesus for his words, didn't they? Mark chapter 14, let's look at it. Verse 55, now the chief priests and the entire council were trying to obtain testimony against Jesus to put him to death. We're going to see that in this chapter with Joseph as well. They conspired to murder him. And they were not finding any. They couldn't find any testimony against Jesus. And by the way, there's two guys in the Bible, two guys where there's no recorded sin. Now, of course, they sin. The Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's no not one that does good. You know, all are sinners. But the Bible, God's word, God made sure that these two guys had no recorded sin about them. And who were they? That's right. One of them was Joseph and the other one was Daniel. 
and they were both the interpreter of dreams and both dearly beloved by God, and God did not record their sin. So in that same way, we're seeing it right here with Jesus in Mark chapter 14, the council, this they, they arrested Jesus, and by the way, it was in the middle of the night, that was against the law, they weren't supposed to be doing that. And the entire council were trying to obtain testimony against Jesus to put him to death, and they were not finding any. You know why? Jesus was perfect. He did not sin. He was flawless. He was the the lamb without blemish, my friend. Okay? All right. So Mark 14, are you the Christ? Caiaphas says to Jesus, the son of the blessed one. And Jesus said to him, I am, and you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What he was saying is basically Joseph's dreams that he said to his brothers. In other words, Caiaphas, you're going to see me at the right hand of the power, and you're going to bow down to me. That's what Jesus was saying, and that made Caiaphas livid. And by the way, Caiaphas was not an, a Pharisee. By the way, he was a Sadducee. And the Sadducees, by the way, were connected to the Hellenistic priests of the time of Antiochus Epiphanes, that evil Antichrist-type guy. And they were the ones who became Hellenized. And they didn't even believe in the life after death, the resurrection, which went right against the Scriptures. They didn't even believe in that. And they were horrible. And there's not one record, there's no record of in the scriptures of a Sadducee getting saved. There's record of Pharisees getting saved, right? There's Joseph of Arimathea, Nicodemus, and probably more. But there's no record of Sadducees. There may have been a Sadducee, I hope there was, who changed and repented and turned to God and, and was saved. But there's no record of that. They were evil. And Caiaphas was a Sadducee. So let's get into it some more, guys. So... Jesus says to him, I am the Christ, right? That Christ is the Greek for the anointed one, the Messiah. And you, he says to Caiaphas, shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. In other words, you're going to bow down to me, is what Jesus was saying. (laughs) And this made him very angry, livid. And so what does he do? Tearing his clothes, the high priest said, What further need do we have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. How does it seem to you, he says to this council. And they all condemned him as deserving death. Wow. Wow. So here we see in Joseph's story, right? We see that they plotted against him later in Genesis 37 to put him to death. And they ripped his tunic off of him. This is what they did to Jesus when he was crucified. He was mocked, beaten. They threw Joseph into a dried up cistern, a dried up well. And then they sold him for pieces of silver. Judas sold Jesus for pieces of silver. And then they handed him over to the Gentiles. And they thought he was long gone out of their lives forever. But there's more to the story. <laughs> and then here in Acts 7, Stephen, right when he was being martyred, he was giving a history lesson to these religious leaders about Israel and God's relationship with them. And he says, And on the second visit, Joseph made himself known to his brothers. What does that mean? That means Jesus, on his second visit, is going to make himself known to his brethren, Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel, right? That's who these brothers were. They were the patriarchs of Israel. And what did they do at first on his first visit? They handed him over to the Gentiles. They handed him over to be crucified. And they sold him for pieces of Judas, right? That's where we get the name uh, uh, Judah did it in Joseph's story. He came up with that plan to sell Joseph for pieces of silver. And later on, Judas, which is where the name uh, Judas co- derives from the name Judah. You see the connections here? And he was sold for 20 pieces of silver, which was the price of a slave. But in Jesus' time, he was sold for 30 pieces of silver. Inflation, right? Goes up. Which was also the price of a slave during that time. 
This is no mistake. God weaved all of this together, my friend. This is amazing stuff. So here we are in this great series and this, you know, finding Jesus in the Old Testament. And I believe it's going to cause your heart to burn if it's not already. It'll burn within you as you see Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, in all of the Tanakh, if you're in Israel. It means the Old Testament, the Jewish Old Testament. And Jesus actually put it in that order on Resurrection Day in Luke chapter 24. He put it in the order of the books of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, which is the order of the Tanakh. And he showed where he was found in all of it because he's in it. (laughs) So fun, you guys. Hey, don't forget to hit this playlist right here on how to find Jesus in the Old Testament, and you'll get all the episodes. There's a bunch of them that you missed already. You want to go back and check them all out. And don't forget, you might want to hit the subscribe button as well, um, because when you do that, it, you subscribe to this channel. This is a channel is all about the, teaching the whole counsel of God, the whole Bible, and you'll get all of it. You won't miss a thing, and you'll experience God's love as we go through His Word you're going you're gonna to be blessed by it, my friend. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you, if you want to, and you'll, you won't miss anything. If you hit that little bell, you'll get all the alerts and everything like that. And you can leave your comments and questions down below. I'd love to answer any of that, you guys. And again, don't forget to hit that playlist right here, Jesus, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. I love you guys. God bless you.